In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Though sometimes the journey of faith might seem as long and arduous as the season of winter, we believe the kingdom of God is at hand. So let us turn to God, trusting that God provides companions on our journey. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to repentance. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your compassion and your love are from of old. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to leave all and follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living and ever-loving God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now, Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Teach me. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. 
From now on, let those having wives act as not having them. Those weeping as not weeping. Those rejoicing as not rejoicing. Those buying as not owning. Those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. When there's a serious emergency, what do we do? Dial 911, huh? And we know that the responder there will see that help is given as soon as possible. The responder on the line would never say to us, uh, hold on, I'll give you a call back, you know. They wouldn't think of that. They right away respond as much as possible and do give the help as much as possible. And it's kind of today when we see Jesus calling these, these disciples, you know, he made a call for help. And the response was immediate of these disciples. Peter and Andrew, and then James and John, their response without hesitation, they left everything and followed Jesus. Such a, a radical following. He didn't say, they didn't say, you know, we're busy fishing when our day's over, we'll follow you when we can take care of everything else. No, the response was immediate. You know, Jesus call, then there's a response and life changes radically. You notice that in the, then in the calling of these early disciples, Jesus called the very ordinary working class people. They were doing ordinary work, fishermen, as in today's gospel. Note that the other people who were probably kind of watching Jesus, especially as he's choosing these few people, they're probably surprised that uh, the religious authorities were not consulted. He didn't even approach the religious people. He went to the common people because he knew that their hearts would be open. He knew that they would be willing to follow instead of argue about things. So Jesus has called each one of us in our baptism. He's called us to be priest, prophet, and king, to respond. Now some of us, you know, majority of us probably were, were baptized as infants and our parents did that for us. And then they led us in the faith because parents are the first and foremost teachers of the faith. 
And then hopefully from those, those early beginnings and that nourishment that we receive right from the beginning would hopefully for us then have an open heart to respond to the call of whatever Jesus has for us. And for each one of us, we all have a vocation, whether that vocation is to ordained ministry or religious life or single life or married life, whatever it is, there's something for all of us. And God loves each one of us. And we're all called, no matter which vocation we have, we're all called to spread the good news of God's love. And so Jesus chose the ordinary people because he knew they would be open. May we keep our hearts open to respond to God's call of love so that we can be his faithful disciples, that we can be his good witnesses, you know, wherever we are. Even for those who are homebound, you know, even ministering uh, the God's love through those that maybe take care of them, through their ways that they love their family members and friends. We all have a purpose. No one is a throwaway person. We're all loved by God. We're all called by God to let his love shine through us. Amen. Together we proudly profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord says that he is the light of the world and that all who follow him will have the light of life. Let us shine that light on others as we pray for the needs of our world. That the church at once saint and sinner always find herself turning toward the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That global citizens and leaders affirm the oneness of the global community and work together for justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our community of faith and in our neighborhoods advocate for vulnerable populations as they proclaim the nearness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, for those who suffer during these trying times, for those who are joining us in prayer, both remotely and in person, and for all the personal mass intentions we bring before the Lord in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living and ever-loving God, empower us to be your disciples today. Lead us all into the light and peace of your kingdom. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, Gregory, his assistant, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter into my room, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our loving God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God.